And it's gonna sound kind of similar to the how I got here or how I became homeless video, but not really. It's just gonna be more in depth and a more deep dive into what I do personally and what we do on a daily or what we personally do in our lives, like uh, as far as interest wise and like uh, just hobbies and stuff like that. So as you can see, we're in our uncle's pool, my uncle's pool, the one that let us stay with him for this temporary amount of time. Today's video, we're gonna be reflecting on life before being homeless. Basically talking about our lives, like what we used to do, how we used to uh, live our lives. I guess we could start from the last place that we officially moved into because before we were homeless, we uh, actually did do a lot. We had a lot going on. As you guys know or may not know, I do make music. I've been making music for at least 10 years now. Uh, since I was in high school, but before we became homeless, I was very active in the music scene uh, in the city that I'm from. I did shows every week. I was doing. I performed at Rolling Loud once. Uh, I've been on tour with Dreamville, Earth Gang, JID. I've thrown shows in my city. I've hosted events. Just I. We, we were people that like to go to different events and shit like that. Uh, babe. She does her own thing. She has her YouTube channel. She has her own YouTube channel, which is part of the reason, and mainly most of the reason why I started this YouTube channel is because she was telling me to get on YouTube. I mean, just to start reflecting, I'm from Tampa, Florida, and in Tampa, Florida, I did a lot of shit musically. A studio, a lot of songs, a lot of events. I would say I'm one of the pioneers of the underground music scene in the city. So it let me explore the city a lot more in depth than I would have uh, you know had I done anything else so back in Temple Terrace when we lived in Temple Terrace area this is basically the beginning of us becoming homeless we were putting together our own studio we had rented out the top apartment and the bottom apartment of the building that we were uh, staying in and uh, at that point, we decided to build our own creative like workspace, studio, venue, uh, whatever you want to call it, because we had so much going on. Like I had music going on, she had her YouTube channel going on. We wanted to start hosting events, and uh, you know we we thought like you know a two bedroom apartment would uh, kind of be like a hub for all of that stuff. Like we had one room that was our like production room where we, we had a couch set up and like the cameras that we're using right now set up for like uh, people to come in and do interviews or babe to set up and do her different because uh, she has two YouTube channels. She has a YouTube channel where she does ASMR mm -hmm. and she has a YouTube channel where she just talks to people. And it was a cool setting for her to just sit in there and like talk to people. It was a very vibey room. She picked out the decorations. She made it look real cool. The other room was like the full-fledged recording studio. We had the shirt press in there. We printed up our own merch and everything like that. Uh, and uh, we had our LLC going for that and everything. Uh, and uh, we were about to get ready to turn that into a recording studio where people could come and pay and record their songs at. And then the living room area was gonna be like the venue area where we were gonna build a stage and we were gonna have like curtains separating that. But it would be like a live, uh, like an online live performance venue where people, artists will come through and do like one song and uh, we'll stream it live on our uh, YouTube channel or on our- uh, And we were also gonna have like private view seats. So you, mm -hmm. have to pay, you can pay and have a limited amount of seats in the house. Yeah, so like some SNL type shit. Like, you know how they have Saturday Night Live in front of a live studio audience. Because it was a one-bedroom apartment living room, you know, there would be a select two amount of seats. Two-bedroom apartment living room. There was going to be a select amount of seats in there and, like, stuff like that. We even, uh, like, took off the door for the, uh, the kitchen closet. And there was, like, it made it, like, a little space where we're going to put, like, tables and chairs and stuff like that. Because there was enough room that pushed back enough so where you could put a table inside the closet. And have people like sitting in there for like refreshments and stuff so that was going to be a cool area because it, it was an apartment it had a kitchen and we were going to have like drinks and like different things like that so 
you know, all this stuff happened when I was younger. I mean, just younger, uh, learning. We were both young and, like, learning, going through a lot. And, uh, you know, I, just being around bad influences and just being very naive and young, you know, kind of threw off the momentum of what we had going on. And it was... I mean, it just basically went downhill from there. Because when you throw off the momentum of what you have going on in your household, it's like letting people in and letting your castle fall. So, it, it was very hard after that for us. Like, even me uh, with my spouse, like, it was very hard for us to even be as connected as we are now. But, I mean, it, it definitely did make us closer, but it was very, it was very hard times. Like... It was not something that I would wish on anybody, especially when they're in a relationship with their best friend or something like that. Like, you know, don't let people into your castle and don't let them know your business. And that's a big portion of how I would say we lost a lot of things. And, uh, you know, from that being a learning experience, you know, we know a lot more now. But at the time I was 25, going on 20 what 26 or yeah 25 going on 26 now i'm 27 going on 28 so i've had more than enough time to learn from that and you know be firm in who i am now so that is a it was a really big stepping stone and uh basically after all that stuff happened uh which i i'll make a detailed video about that later on uh we decided to restart and you know everybody says there's no restart button on life and stuff like that which is very very true but at some point you can control people don't realize how much control they do have over their life like for real uh even if it's not an ideal circumstance or it wouldn't be the ideal thing to do if you decide you want to drop everything and start over you can you just got to know it comes with certain things like for us it came with being homeless it came with a lot of things and uh you know so that's what we decided to do we decided that we were going to lease sublease our apartment use the money that we got from subleasing it and stay in the airbnb and literally start from ground zero but we were i had or i mean i just guess both of us really had to come to the realization that we weren't even starting at square one just doing that. Like, we had to lose everything. We had to sell everything. We got really, it got really real down to the point that you seen us living in a car. Like, we had to get that low. So, we lost a lot also, of things. Also, like, um, I don't mean to cut you off. Go ahead, man. Also, like, you gotta consider we don't come from backgrounds where our parents are stable either. Like, yeah, don't look at this pool and let it fool you. This, this isn't is my uncle. pool. This is my uncle's pool. This isn't my, like my dad's pool. Stayed, this isn't my, my mom's pool. My parents been homeless pool. for since I was in high school. I've been homeless since I was in high school. Like I have, I was the person that got my first apartment for myself. My first two vehicles that I ever had came from me just working jobs. Like my parents lived with me at one point because they literally were homeless since I was like 16 or 15, back and forth. Cause we moved here from New Jersey. And we didn't have any family. We had like a cousin, but my cousin, you know, my family didn't get along as much. And so like, I ended up uh, working really hard and kind of like, really hard. I mean, not getting no sleep, had no friends, had no social life. And I just worked all the time, saved up all my money, and kind of like got out of the, living in my car to the apartment. And then I met, I started hanging out with Mike and that's how I was able to kind of like get a peace of mind in life because I was really going insane at, a, at 18 years old and I was working since I was a teenager and so uh yeah my parents they were I mean I hopefully they uh got something now I don't talk to them as much but they've they've been homeless since I was in high school they've been living in hotels and that's another thing so I come from nothing literally like it ain't no one I know that have any home like he's the first person I've seen 
where I was like, oh, you can own homes? Like, like and that sounds crazy when you're in 2020 mm-hmm. and 20, I mean, even then, 2015, looking at people like, what? Like, you have stability? Like, what even is that? Yeah, people don't I didn't even know I didn't have stability until I realized, oh, that's probably why I can't do half the things that are normal is most people are socializing people or... I'm talking about stuff that's normal to me, and people look at me like, oh, my God, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that that wasn't normal. So yeah, it people, really puts you back, puts you far behind. In our situation, you start, I mean, you learn that stability itself is really a luxury. Like, mm-hmm. my parents didn't have stability. They were very unstable. Uh, yeah, very unstable people as far as, like, being together in their dynamic as a couple. So, uh, you know, it caused very unstable children growing up. Regardless of what my uncles had or my grandparents had, I always tell people, like, your main source is going to come from your parents. Like, unless your parents just completely give you up, like, imagine having parents that uh, have you... And I'm not saying that my environment was, like, crazy, crazy. Because you could tell, like, like, our parents did what they knew. They did what they knew, but But then, it's like, where does that leave? It's like Pretty Boy Fredo. I'm, I'm going to yeah. put this in the video. Pretty Boy Fredo has a video saying where he meets his biological parents for the first time. And I can relate so hard to that video because Mm -hmm. it's not like my parents, that's not like I never knew my biological parents, but he says in that video, uh, you know, this is what my life could have been like if they hadn't given me up for adoption. I just feel more like the child that actually wasn't Wasn't giving giving up. up, You (laughs) know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying it was probably as bad as his parents, but... My you parent, just, you, one of my parents look, is living exactly like one of his parents right and one of, and Actually, both, my both parents, of them are living exactly like And both, both my parents, parents right they're now. living, they were so, they were like that, got into hotels and, like, literally the way he looked at his dad, seeing him, like, under a bridge, like, that's pretty much damn near how I was looking, looking at my dad driving by, seeing him selling drinks or, you know, just out there panhandling. And it just makes you think, like, you become numb. It's weird. It's like you 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 have to really acknowledge so much at the same time being alive. So it takes a lot. It takes a lot out of you because you can't you can't even do anything about those type of things yeah. sometimes. And just imagine the load it has on us when we're the kids and we're looking out for our parents as if we're their parents and not that. We shouldn't all look out for each other, but that's a big responsibility on people who were just born here. Mm-hmm. And I, we're fighting to not repeat the same cycle with our kids. And, you know, that's why empathy is so important. It's so important to be able to, if not, if you are not in the same position as someone else, to not invalidate their experience and really try to connect with somebody based off of what them being another human in their experience. Because you will really get caught up in all these, like, small things and what it's supposed to look like you'll forget that that's another human being in front of you and you never know what they've been going through and so it's not even about just being kind sometimes you just just leave people alone like (laughs) some people really going through it and you'll never know what they've been through because they may not look like it or talk like it or you don't know how far someone's come unless you really care that's yeah and even if you you really really care, care sometimes just you know, let let people be. Some people just want to be, and so I mean, I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like that's why channels like this. No matter how people want to say, why would you? You know, if they if they do say, you know, why would you put your life so low on camera? Why would you do this and that? With well, some people that you never know, like what someone else can get from these videos, or yeah. how how somebody else's life is. Mm-hmm. Uh, affected by or how this. close someone else because is we to already this. see what, what how people's lives are affected by seeing luxury on online or on camera and like other stuff but it's like this is real life like for most people for a lot of people and a lot of people even would say you know it's first nature to ask your grandparents or your uncle or people like that can you stay with them and live with them and it's just that easy but for a lot a lot of other people uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of other people out here that really... I'm making sure it's a recording. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, I see the red dot. Okay. Yeah. For a lot of other people, it may be hard for them, or may, they may not know that they can do that. Like, that's a real thing. Like, especially for me. Like, it wasn't like a, this is a first nature thing just to go ask somebody, can I live with them? Especially after you're, like, 27 and you're, like, supposed to be grown and, like, your parents, like, kind of... 
you know, your parents aren't stable. So it's like you don't have a stable relationship with anybody. If you don't have a stable relationship with your parents, it's hard to have a stable relationship with anybody you meet. Because that's what your example of stability is. Mm -hmm. Unless your parents have completely given that responsibility up to somebody and let you know as mm -hmm. a child, it's going to be hard for you. So that's why, I mean, at least for me, I know it was hard for me to realize uh, if I have a stable relationship with somebody. And that was like friends, family, all this other shit. And that's things I had to learn and like grow with. Like you guys seen firsthand me record a video of me calling my uncle where I was terrified to call him. And I went through so much stuff from that trauma that was passed down to me being uh, terrified. And I'm not saying trauma passed down and my parents had to go through it. I'm saying trauma passed down is this is all I know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of if I grew up knowing my uncles or anything like that. I have also seven years of adulthood trauma on me. Of the things that I've went through that tells me, uh, you know, nobody's gonna accept you around nobody wants to hear from you uh people have made you out to be this to your family and, and that not even family. that but the one yeah. of the things i feel like people don't talk about is like victimizing you yeah. like You're it's scared. a whole nother journey yeah. and struggle when people start victimizing your yeah. story instead of um embracing just you embracing or, you as a person like yeah. this, is, this is a real experience like that's why black people have such a hard time here because some people, if they're not victimizing us, they're criminalizing us. Mm -hmm. They're not humanizing us. Being like, oh, this is your experience. Mm -hmm. I never knew. Or, okay, that can that can be that's very possible in this world. Even if you don't never identify with it, that's why you ask questions. That's why you. That's the whole reason of conversation, so you can understand each other. What's the point of talking to people if you don't even care to understand them? Like at that point, well, what are we doing? So that's why for me, you know, I've always been in my bubble and I'm sure you feel like you've always been in a weird bubble because when people hear your story, even if they you just casually talking, in some weird way they victimize you. Mm -hmm. And if they don't if they can't feel like if they can't feel like you are at a certain place in your life, it's almost like they can't even receive you. And that's when you start naturally rejecting your own self from people. You don't wanna talk, you don't wanna be around and then they, people think you're crazy or something's wrong but it's mm -hmm. like I just want to be a person like I don't really need to be victimized because you start to internalize that and do it yourself you start victimizing yourself like my parents and I'm sure a lot of people's parents you look at them and you go you wonder where where things stop, stop for them and maybe they realize you know I can get more if I victimize myself mm -hmm. but really you don't you don't get anything you get you get you start becoming the same person that people do that to you to yourself and now you can't get out of the same hole or that hole because you're so busy left in guilt and left in I'm a victim and why me, you know? Another thing is you lose, one thing I realize is you lose your confidence. You lose yeah, a lot of your confidence. confidence going through a lot of this stuff. So imagine being a child in one of those households that grows up to be an adult that goes through these things because there was no preparation or anything like that like you know uh life's not set up to be uh fair and stuff like that but when you have no prior examples besides those you know your confidence is gonna get shot every time you take a hit with anything and if it's just hit after hit after hit you're, there's you're no confident. room to fail yeah, there's no room to fail so your confidence just shoots down and uh you know it's even why a lot of the people that are in that position stay in that position but the reason that i would say i'm doing this is because i'm working every day on building my confidence back and i'm, mm -hmm. I'm knowledgeable of it like i'm not letting some i'm trying uh with everything to not let anything tear my confidence down because i've seen examples of what it looks like to have your confidence completely Destroyed. stripped and those would be like you know people like our parents or like other people out here that are experiencing the same thing that i can tell aren't putting the effort in so the confidence part is a big thing to uh you know keep holding on to or keep going after uh, I mean, I remember times before I had my confidence stripped away and what I was mm -hmm. doing, and I'm not doing half of that stuff now. And it's very clear to me, and I know why. It's because I don't have as much confidence, but every day I'm working on building that confidence back. 
Like when I was doing shows, like I'm terrified to get on stage and get in perform. You haven't done and I have anything. video. You, I mean, I'm gonna be posting videos throughout this on top of these clips so you guys can see. But I used to do shows like back to back every week, every day of the week, sometimes every weekend. Uh, we was traveling, doing different shows, like recording music in different studios, music videos, and my confidence was just like up here. But after you go through a lot of shit in life, like your confidence just drops down so much. Sometimes it gets so low that you don't think you're ever going to be able to rebuild it. And I know what that feels like too. So that, I mean, that's the whole purpose of this channel, like low confidence, living, like literally living with low confidence, trying to rebuild it. But yeah, like you guys will see the clips and. You can just feel the confidence from the clips. Like, you couldn't do stuff like that without confidence. But, you know, I feel the same way about this stuff, too. So, I mean, you couldn't do stuff like this without some type of confidence or will to have confidence. So, I don't know. Yeah, and I, I also, it's weird because, like, and I, like, even now, like, sometimes I have to have conversation with myself to remind myself that I'm a person. Like, it sounds so crazy, but, like, when you go through so much, like, I mean, he he has moments like he's talking about where he had confidence, but I come from somewhere where your confidence is destroyed before you even get out of the house because people almost, like, want to protect you. And not even because they uh, feel like you can't think maybe it's, I'm pretty sure it's not that stuff. It's more so, like, they are projecting a lot of times because they want to they wanna protect you because maybe they, they don't understand what's happening. And I'm more so because I'm black. You know, it's not you having the confidence of any person as well as a black person can get you killed, can can do a lot of things to you, mess you up mentally. So many things. If you're not careful uh, how you communicate it to others. And so it is, it's it's just to a point where you have to remind yourself, I'm a person like it's not even just about all the raising, like all types of stuff. Like my experiences, I'm a person because like you walk around sometimes with your head down or like nobody can see you. Or that you're just trying to do what you're doing and you forget that it's other people who really can see you. Like, Mike used to tell me, like, and it, really, it, really, it really becomes like a realization, like, oh, I'm here. I have to talk. I have to hold my head up. I have to, it, you just have to always look at yourself like I'm, I'm here and I'm living. Because maybe that sounds crazy, but, like, I don't know if you understand, but, like, that's just, like, how I recently identified myself. Like, I'm a person, I'm here, and I'm valid. And not that, not that, that, uh, I don't know how to put it, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, but like, it's just a hard thing when you had to live your whole life not noticing you're here, and then, and not even saying like not noticing you're here, like, you obviously do stuff and see yourself doing stuff, and when you have to almost like cut yourself off from your confidence, like he was saying, and people want you to be here, and you know who you are, or you know what you like, and all that stuff, so you really have to like kind of like take that trauma away because it, it really gets to you like it beats the world can beat you down real low if you're not careful you know who's around you or what you're doing every day you know like I just said pick your head up sometimes talk to people when you don't want to like be really realize you're here engaging in life and you're not just here to die mm -hmm. or you're not just here excuse me to get by or to keep people happy or to make people feel comfortable you're not mm -hmm. and all of those things like that beat you up kind of show you like how are you going to let that stuff take away you as a person or are you going to rise above the occasion and, and you know kind of figure out what it is that you have to do to be here and make this experience worthwhile because otherwise you are just going to fade away or you might just become that person on the side of the road or you know just a person with other people because you chose to let life show you who you are instead of you being who you want to be you know Yep, and we're gonna close it out with that. Uh, we also have we like I said we've been documenting this whole experience. We have videos unreleased of when we first, first, first left the apartment. So stay tuned for those because I'm gonna be re releasing those soon, probably on our couples channel uh, I'm proud of you, baby. and here. But uh, I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of your you. Your channel's cool. Stay you tuned got a for all been the videos. on you this whole time. Ooh, you know get off. I was trying to get water. Get off. Oh, it's a bee. It was a bee. Yeah. I'm sad, baby. You hurt the bee. It was gonna hurt me. Oh well, it was crawling on you the whole time on your nipple and everything. <laughs> and I was like, well, maybe he don't know. No, I didn't know. All right, guys, <laughs> subscribe, like, comment. Stay tuned for the rest. 
this is a short version uh don't be fooled by this pool but i'm gonna go take my laps because i deserve <laughs> it you deserve it <laughs>